Hey brothers and sisters, I pray you guys are all having a blessed day today. Um, I pray you guys are all safe and indoors wherever you're at if you've got some crazy weather going on outside. Um, it just started raining here. I know we're supposed to have some sort of flash flood um, here on the west coast and I know on the east coast, you guys, whew, you guys have been through quite a winter um, and spring. So I just pray you guys are all safe wherever you are and that you are having a blessed start to your day. I wanted to talk today about our tongues and that there is life and death in the power of the tongue. And, um, Oh, it is, it is something that I think we don't really fully understand really the magnitude of how powerful our words are. They are very powerful and they can kill. You know, we know Satan has been deceiving. He's used it to deceive. That deception kills us. And we know that it brings life, that we do not live by bread, of, bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. And so it brings truth and life. And um, we also know, it says in his word, that our mouth will either justify us on the day of judgment or it will condemn us, the words that, that come out of our mouth. Um, it is very, very powerful, you guys, the tongue. It is very powerful. And, um, you know, I don't come on here and talk to you guys about things in a self-righteous way that I am not guilty of the things that I have talked to you guys about. And I will always be transparent with you guys and always tell you, I'll be the first to raise my hand up and say, I screwed up and this is how I did it. But I think with the things that we talk about here, we can all learn from. So even as I'm telling you guys these things, I'm learning from it. I'm learning so much and I really pray that you guys are learning from it too and, and just encouraged, just encouraged. I'm not here to teach. I just wanna encourage you guys. So um, let me just reiterate that because I, um, I'm guilty of it. I'm, I'm totally guilty of um, saying things without speaking. I think we all are, um, you know, um, the tongue is just so powerful, you know, it's, um, and it can be so detrimental. Um, and I've said things, you guys, to people that I love in a, in a moment of, of heated passion and anger where the enemy gets in there and um, and I have said things that you can't take back once you say. And um, you can you can be repentful and ask the Lord for forgiveness. Um, and He forgives. He forgives. He's so faithful and so merciful. Um, but it's coming to him in that sincerity of, of repentance, not just saying you're sorry, but really feeling the, the, the grievance of the Holy Spirit. It's not a good feeling, guys. I thought that I felt convicted over things before I really, truly started walking with the Lord. It is nothing compared to the conviction you feel when you have his Holy Spirit living in you and you grieve him. Um, that, that really 
it hurts. But we have to be careful not to fall into self-condemnation. It's a battle that I have to constantly fight for myself. Um, but anyways, I just want to, I want to tell you guys, um, I was planning on talking about this, um, yesterday and was, you know, reading some verses in, in his word and, um, um, you know, just praying about it and, and something happened yesterday with my little boy and I. And now I will say that my patience with him is, uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> he um, has always been, he was colicky as a baby and it was, you know, just constantly, constantly, constantly. It actually, I think him and um, his sensitivity and crying and everything has built that patience within me. But I have, I really don't like feeling disrespected. And at four years old, I get a little worried sometimes. I don't know if you guys as parents can relate or if this is just something that I'm dealing with with a four-year-old. I, I expected this kind of like attitude thing to happen at 14. <laughs> I thought I had about 10 more years to go on this. It's starting now. And so... Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm always in communication with him, always talking to him, always encouraging him to speak to me and tell me what's on his heart and how he's feeling. Um, but anyway, it was just, it, it, he was testing me. And, you know, I look at it as the enemy was testing me all day because here I am coincidentally wanting to talk about the tongue and how powerful it is. And I slipped last night and I said something in a heated moment of anger, which it should have never even gotten there. Um, and I said something that I'm still, I'm still dealing with this morning because, um, after I said it, I instantly, instantly was rebuking that because I know I do understand the power of our words and what we say and especially what we say to our children. What we remember, you guys, when we were kids and our parents would lose it or something, you know, and um, those, those never go away. They never, those memories never go away. And, um... And so I fell, I fell hard and I was just, you know, um, afterwards just praying, praying to the Lord that he would, that he would intervene and, um, and that he would shut that door that may have possibly opened for anything to come in for my son with what I said. Um, anyway, just letting you guys know, you know, um, it, it's, our words can really, really um, do some damage and they can bring life and, um, you know, we, we could curse someone we love without even realizing that we're cursing them. Okay. And that is another thing that we need to understand too. If you, if you are saying something to someone, whatever words that come out of your mouth to that person, you're declaring onto them. And I, I don't think everybody really truly understands that. So even if you're joking and you're saying something in, in, um, in jest or whatever, um, that it's really dangerous. It's really dangerous because you could say, oh, you know, no, you can't do that. Or, um, no, you know, and you can do it to yourself. That's another thing, guys. I, my whole life, 
my whole life. I would actually, I, this sounds really sick, but looking back on it, I would stand in front of a mirror and yeah, I dealt with all kinds of stuff. You know, I was bulimic for a couple years um, and actually got down to a really, really scary, scary weight. Um, I, you know, they call that like the whole body dysmorphia thing. It's demonic. It's, it's straight up demonic. Um, but I would stand in front of a mirror and talk to the, the image that I would look at and just say the most horrific disgusting things at that image that I saw back looking back at myself in the mirror and I had so much hatred towards myself I thought that I thought it was me that had that hatred for myself uh, but there was something else spiritual that was going on there um, and you saying, oh, I'll never do this. I'll never do, you are cursing yourself. You are actually invoking power on your words, okay? Witches, they know, they know how serious our tongues are and they understand that they can um, use their tongue to cause harm. But we as Christians, you guys, we have to understand we've got that too. And we can bless, we can use our tongues to declare blessings on other people, to invoke the power of the Lord and His will onto people. So we have to understand that we have it, that we can use it for life. We can use it for truth when the enemy uses it for deceptions and to steal, kill, and destroy. Um, but we also know we see in, in, in God's word that Jesus even used his tongue to curse too with the fig tree. You know, he was hungry. He walks by this tree. He thinks, you know, he sees the leaves on it. It looks like a, a nice, you know, like it's bearing fruit. He walks by and sure enough, there's no fruit on it at all. And he curses the tree. And the next morning, him and his disciples walk by and it's all shriveled up at the root. And his disciples, I'm sure, were thinking, wow, this guy full on cursed this tree and it happened. And he said to them, I'm telling you guys, believe whatever it is you ask for. Believe that you have already received it and it will be given unto you. The enemy uses it. I mean, People that are involved in witchcraft, they understand that verse, I think, more than some Christians understand. They're just using it for evil. But we can use, we can use our tongues um, to manifest things in the natural for the kingdom of God, for good. Um, and, um, you know, even, um, even our father in the Old Testament he cursed the Israelites. He warned them, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to send these horrible nations. You're not even going to know what is up from down. You guys are going to be fleeing constantly from these nations if you worship other gods. So he let them know ahead of time, this is what I'm going to do if you do this. And they did. And because the Lord is true to every word that comes out of his mouth, he fulfilled that curse on them. And so we, this world is cursed. We are living in, in a cursed world um, because of our, our sin and our falling away from God. So, um, so yeah, I just want to I talk to you guys um, just how powerful our tongues are and and you know it's so important you guys to really think before we speak we're, we're gonna fall sometimes we get back up we repent but um, yeah it's uh, it also says I think in Proverbs it says you know, that a fool 
well, it's just quick to talk. <laughs> a fool is just quick to speak. But a wise man is quick to listen and, and, and slow to speak. That's how we need to be. That's how we need to be. Um, yeah, I, I um, it's so funny, you know, because I've always stood by that. Um, and with relationships and friendships, um, always kind of, um, we shouldn't be prideful. We shouldn't be prideful on anything. And maybe that's what the Lord was trying to tell me yesterday with this happening. Um, because I have always kind of felt like, oh, you know, it's really not an issue I've ever had with other people. I've always talked major smack about myself, but with others, I've always been the one to listen. And, um, and I've always been really careful with my words towards other people. And then, and then I fell, I fell last night. And, um, so yeah, you, you guys just need to, need to keep that in mind. We all need to keep that in mind. Um, it says in James, let every man be quick to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath, slow to anger. Um, and, um, what is it? I think, um, is it, let's see. Okay. Yeah. So James, um, I wrote a note on it and it's right here. So James, uh, chapter three goes into detail about, um, more about that in our tongue. And, um, and it talks about how, we should not be using the same tongue to bless the Lord and to curse our neighbor, okay? And I just want to let you guys know, when you hear the word curse, you, you're going to, you think, or I have thought, okay, curse, like you're saying, you know, oh, I curse you, you know, you do some little like bippity boppity boo type stuff I mean like you know you got your little pot and you're picturing like the witch from Snow White and oh I'm gonna put a little curse on this person that's what I've always pictured when I hear the word curse mm -mm. a curse is declaring something on another person you are invoking power onto um your your speech on what you say to that person so even um not even a curse word you guys not even saying the f word or whatever um but that's all vile stuff that comes out of our mouth that's garbage too none of that is edifying uh, none of that is bringing glory to our father so that's all bad too um but really cursing someone is is um is saying watch watch i bet that person's going to end up doing this that's a curse that is a curse that you just put onto that person do you not understand that do you not understand how serious that kind of stuff is like i would say that to myself like oh man now i know it i know it watch watch this and then i would declare something out of my mouth and it would always come to pass that is because that is how powerful our tongues can be. So it says in the book of James, you cannot, light has no fellowship with darkness. So you cannot use the same little organ, even though it's a tiny thing, it is so powerful, you guys. It, it, it determines whether you live or die. So you can't use this tiny little organ to to declare blessings on our father, but then um, curse your neighbor. Um, yeah, and I, I wanted to just talk to you guys really quick about um, interceding, interceding and, um, and blessing other people. 
and interceding in prayer for them. So um, I'll actually leave in the description box um, a, a couple just examples of how you can intercede, how you can declare blessings and use your tongue to edify and to use it um, to bring glory to the kingdom of God and to watch it work because if you pray with that faith, it will happen. Um, so I'll leave a couple examples of how you can, um, and they're all backed by the Bible, okay? We, we use that as, as our, our main go-to manual. Um, so you can um, intercede and, and bless someone and invoke that grace and that power from God onto another human being. So I'll just give you guys a couple of examples on how to do that. Um, different prayers that you can, you know, just guidelines. Um, you don't have to say it verbatim, but just going off of examples from the Bible of, of how you can do that. Use your tongue for good, for life, for truth. So I hope you guys were encouraged by this message today. I love just, just openly speaking to you guys about this stuff because this is a journey we are all on and um, everybody who really loves, loves the Lord and is a follower of Jesus Christ um, and just lean on one another for support. And um, yeah, so... I pray you guys were all encouraged by this message. I love you and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Be safe and have a blessed day. Bye.